Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another video. I hope you enjoyed that little intro. I won't be keeping that as the intro throughout the whole series. Do not worry. It will hopefully change as I improve my posing. See what I'm going to do? Like new posing routine or new posing video, new intro. We will see how long it goes for. I don't know. The first part of this video is going to be a review of massage guns. Now, the, blah, 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 the research that goes into massage guns hasn't actually been done. So most people that research this or say that it works are actually referring to research to do with uh, sports massage and other massage techniques. So this is probably um, the cheapest one in the market, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but I got it from Amazon. It was about £60. I got it for my birthday. So, does it work? Probably the main thing people are going to ask, does it work? And from my experience, yes, it does work. Uh, for example, this morning, um, I woke up, had a pretty bit of soreness, maybe tightness in my trap. Um, I got this out, I said to my girlfriend, you need to uh, massage me in the back, please. She said yes. She hit me with the gun. Did a little bit in my uh, trap. And it doesn't hurt anymore. Happy days. Um, would I recommend doing it straight after you done, have done legs yesterday, like I am now? No, I wouldn't, because it's incredibly painful. It's like extremely sore, especially around the teardrop, just like that. I wouldn't recommend doing that. But where it is good on your legs is right on your IT band or when you haven't trained it is very good so I'm gonna give the massage gun a 8 out of 10 review um, it's battery life is pretty damn good as well and the speed it get ups to 20 now the reason this gun doesn't have a 10 out of 10 review is it's quite noisy Listen to this. So if you're trying to watch a film or something and you're relaxing, doing a little bit of uh, massage gun, you can't really watch the film properly because it's so damn noisy. So if you don't really want to massage yourself any other time of the day, apart from when you're watching a film, don't get this. But otherwise, I would suggest giving it a try. It's only 60 quid, it's not bad really. And uh, it does feel incredibly nice. So that's a uh, that's an 8 out of 10 review for this massage gun. It has no brand, so I can't say which brand it is, but Amazon's own, I think. It's lovely. at it again with another voiceover hope you guys are enjoying the video so far if you are please give it a like and subscribe this exercise here is an incline smith machine reverse banded bit of a mouthful incline press now it's a good little exercise for the upper chest i find also quite a lot on the front delts but this is a new exercise for me so i did of course feel this quite a lot the next day in my chest um, it's not a crazy amount of weight on there. Um, we've got two 15s and a 10 aside. Um, it obviously looks like 20s, but those are not 20s. Um, so not a crazy amount of weight, but God damn it, is it is it a hard exercise? So um, if you haven't tried that, it's a slightly different strength curve to the normal one, um, but I do enjoy it quite a lot. So uh, next up, we have the cuffed cable lateral raise. This has been a staple exercise for i don't know like maybe two years now it's been a long time um the reason i haven't changed this exercise out is because i still progress on it um i'm, I'm tending to go for a lot higher reps than i used to i used to just kind of go 12 to 15 now i'll go up to like 25 on some sets um but it is one of my favorite kind of lateral delt uh exercises it really targets it quite a lot and because we've got the cuffs your forearms are taken out of it a little bit i see a lot of people putting the cuffs on your kind of elbow close to your bicep 
but I, I can't I can't get them on there. It's not because my arms are too big. I don't think it's just it's, it's awkward. Um, so I, I choose to put them on the wrists. Um, still a good exercise. You're still going to get the benefit from putting it um, on your wrists. You just may have a little bit more um, elbow kind of stress along that tendon, uh, but shouldn't be anything that will cause any problems. Here we have the chest press. Um, just a normal chest press on this one no incline no decline trying to also use my um, elbow sleeves quite a lot on these exercises just for the first few weeks of my training cycle and then as my next few weeks go on I will stop using the knee sleeves I just find it's a little bit more support and kind of um, you can kind of trust it a little bit more you feel a little bit safer when you go into the exercise um, but I only really use it on my first set of the exercise and then I tend to take it off then for the next few just to make sure elbows are warm and supported uh, if we go and start training and any kind of joints or ligaments are not warm um, or not being warmed up we run a lot higher risk of injury and if we're going to be training smart and training for a long time we need to kind of mitigate as many risks um, of injury as we can in order to kind of play the long game remember this is a marathon not a sprint so next up we have the weighted dips here we're playing with 40 kilos plus 40 kilos i went up to plus 45 kilos uh, body weight at the moment is between uh, 90 and 91 kilos around about there um, first few reps of this as you can see the weight is swinging quite a lot that's that looking back on that kind of annoys me a little bit but the halfway through i kind of sort it out and you can see my form is a little bit better i'm going to my active range of movement so you'll see i kind of go to slightly above parallel maybe parallel um but that's my active range of movement if i go down any further than that it's taking a lot more front delt into the exercise which i don't really want you want to feel your dips in your triceps and of course your chest so next off we're moving on to occlusion training now the way in which i do my occlusion training at the moment is i'll do one uh, day a week where i'm doing normal exercises for the arms triceps and biceps and then one week uh, one workout in the next half of the week where i'll do occlusion training so whether that's um, biceps or triceps so basically i'm doing one x one session non-occluded and then the second session occluded uh, this actual exercise here with the d handles it's probably the most comfortable tricep exercise i've ever done um, i used to love doing behind the head dumbbell extensions but after a while i just found that my elbows were getting a little bit too much um kind of soreness around there bit of inflammation around the tendon so i sacked those off and we're just doing tricep push downs with a d handle and easy bar with occlusion training we want to have high amounts of stress going through into the muscle um, so here we're going to be doing a 20 second rest my uh, fitbit was decided to do some updates so i had to get rid of that and uh, put on the timer on my phone uh, but we're going for 15 to 25 reps with five sets um, and the benefit of occlusion training is that we're putting a lot of stress through into one specific muscle um, and that's allowing us to push lots of blood in there cause lots of metabolic stress uh, and, and and then get hypertrophy without using high high amounts of weight so i'm using i think it's like 24 kilos here um, which is pretty light for me on triceps I, I, I can go pretty heavy but um, when you're occluded you want to go a little bit lower weight and then obviously higher reps for that intensity so we're allowing blood into the muscle and the bands will restrict blood coming out of the muscle um, which is how it causes that metabolic stress in a similar way to having a crazy pump would also cause metabolic stress or something doing like a drop set or giant set or something like that those will all cause stress in the muscle the benefits from occlusion apart from not putting so much stress through your um, tendons and ligaments and joints is also through your vasculature so if we can push lots of pressure going through your veins um, obviously our veins are very very strong there's not really going to be any risk of 
popping any veins or anything like that or having a stroke or anything lots of people move away from occlusion training because they hear um, stories about people having strokes and popping veins and everything like that trust me if you're doing it correctly you will not be running risk of doing that but we're also allowing lots of pressure in our veins which is a good thing so we're allowing lots of fresh blood being pumped to our muscle it's good for promoting blood flow um so a lot of the times if um if you're somebody that has like cold hands or or you get numbness in your fingers um or you you get very um very low amounts of pumps in your arms it could be down to your vasculature so um getting some occlusion training in and really putting some stress through those tendons and uh, sorry stress through those veins uh, will probably help you quite a lot as well so i see so many benefits from occlusion training i i really try and encourage as many of my clients uh, that are willing to do it to do it it is very painful um in 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 a in a good way it's in a in a painful way that getting a crazy pump is painful um but here comes danny double thumbs up cheers mate um but yeah it's it's one of those exercises in which uh i i, I very much enjoy doing so we'll skip forward the rest of this bit because it does obviously take a little while but in the grand scheme of things if you're trying to get lots of volume in uh doing it like this will obviously smash a load of volume but also um, take very little time because you're having minimal rest uh, and high reps. So if you're ever interested in trying some occlusion training, I would recommend getting bear grip straps. Um, you can buy those on Amazon or directly on their website. And if you are interested, you can use 7030 Fit for a 10% discount. They're not expensive though, so you're not going to be saving that much money. I realized a few days ago, I haven't actually told anybody on youtube or on instagram my stats so um i'm about five foot ten and a half uh, and currently 91 to 90 kilos uh, this is the heaviest i've ever been and the leanest i've ever been at this weight so i'm very happy uh, i'd like to ideally be a little bit less lean um going into my prep in a few weeks uh but it's a position where I'm forcing in as much food as I can every single day. I literally can't eat anymore. So I, I, the way I look at it is I'm literally doing everything I can. I, I wish there was more that I could do. Um, I, I've been bloody drinking oil. I've done it all. I've tried eating McDonald's every day. I've tried eating pizzas in the evening every day honestly there's a lot of things that i've tried um i i want to obviously stay natural with everything which i'm doing there's obviously lots of um appetite enhancers which you can get uh which aren't natural um but i'm doing all i can really that's basically everything that i can say um i don't want to make loads of excuses um because that's not who i am i just want to say that i'm trying as much as i can so if uh if i look too lean it's just something which i'm gonna have to kind of accept and maybe it'll be an advantage going into my competition prep i might be able to achieve a little bit better condition than most um but i want to be able to hold on to as much muscle mass as possible this is going to be my main focus going into this prep is preserving as much muscle as possible my last prep i was focused on just getting into the most ridiculous condition i could um and i was willing to sacrifice muscle mass for that this time it's it, it can't happen i need to hold on to as much muscle mass as i can in order to be competitive if i don't i won't stand a chance on stage so that is what my focus is going into this uh competition prep um also i need to work on my uh, cardio a little bit in order to be able to hold these poses for a little bit longer but i'm practicing um, yes. 
Okay, so we're back with another voiceover. This was a chest, shoulders, and triceps workout. Uh, the reason I'm doing so many voiceovers is because this is kind of the content which I like to consume on YouTube. Uh, so if anybody isn't enjoying this, lots of voiceovers and video footage, please let me know and I will change up the content. Um, but here we have dumbbell incline press, only a small incline uh, with 50 kilo dumbbells. Uh, obviously, this spotter, Kyle, uh, he is helping me out a little bit on some of these reps, um, which I prefer to have a spotter which obviously doesn't assist too much, um, but on the flip side, it is a very good way of increasing your strength and just getting a few more reps um, with some assistance. So if you are trying to go to a new weight and uh, you've, got a, you've got a spotter available to you, I would 100% use that um, because it's certainly an advantage. Um, so we did two sets of 50s. The first set was a set of 10. Second set was a set of nine. Uh, and you can see here that I've got my knee sleeves on my elbows uh, just to keep the knees warm as this was only my second exercise, um, starting off with cable lateral raises, uh, which I didn't film. So the uh, spotter here, Kyle Davis, he um, has competed uh, before in men's physique and done incredibly well. Um, was up on a stage with Zach Ainsley and placed above him. So he's a very good athlete. Um, got some fantastic shoulders on him, great lines as well. Extremely symmetrical physique. Um, and I think he'll be also doing some uh, competing this year as well. So if you are interested, um, I will put his Instagram tag on the screen now if you're interested to follow along for the journey. Um, you can do so. So, on to the next exercise. We have shoulder press on the hammer strength machine. Uh, this exercise is a tough one to progress for me. I'm not 100% a fan of the angle um, that your wrists have to go into. Uh, so I do put um, wrist wraps on, on this exercise as when you have a lot of load going through a... Um, position which doesn't feel that comfortable is obviously puts your wrist in a bit of a uh, weaker position which obviously we don't want because that's going to lead to injury um, but I was quite happy with how this went um, it was two sets of seven uh, the first set was um, a lot more difficult than the second set which often does happen to me on this machine uh, I'm not 100% sure why I think it's just getting into the groove and you can also see my right leg here um, my hip starts my hip starts to cramp um, I think as well because the angle on the seat just means that your body slips off a little bit so I was trying to like hold myself into the bench so from there I went into a back off set on 50 a side uh, so 10 kilos down uh, from 60 a side um, when choosing a back off set um, I obviously had quite a few questions about this um, with my online clients and it really depends on the weight in which you're wanting to pick so um, you can go for like percentages but uh, to be honest and most of the time I just go with the feel so if I've done a set of seven say for 60 um, aside then I'll probably look at maybe taking um, a sixth of that off so in this case it was 10 kilos um, in the dumbbell press it was 50 and then I went down to 42.5 um, so a similar sort of ratio of a drop after that I went into a proper incline press. Uh, the first incline dumbbell press was, was not really an incline. I've kind of just made it a small incline because if you do it completely flat I find that there's a little bit of an issue, um, a little niggle maybe in the shoulders um, which is obviously not a good thing. So try and find exercises which suit you and are comfortable for you. Uh, so. We had, I think, two sets of six on 120, and then I did a back off set of 80 kilos, uh, which was a similar ratio, basically, to the amount that I dropped off on the other sets. You'll notice also that two handles fall off each side when I first press, and the reason for that is I'm just lifting up the machine so it's in a bit of a better position for my shoulders rather than starting with my shoulder blades all the way pinned back it gives you a bit more of a more comfortable starting position and uh, is a lot better for your shoulders so if you haven't tried that i would certainly try that little trick it is very good uh, moving from there into some chest isolations um, we did pec deck flies uh, after this 
I did a cable lateral raise cuffed um, which you've already seen in this video so I didn't put it in again uh, but that was my isolation for my chests focusing of course on the lateral delt um, I find lateral delts kind of just the most aesthetic uh, delt to kind of build up that and the rear delt so we finished off with pec deck flies lateral raises and then went into a cuffed tricep pull down uh, again maybe a different exercise to a, what a lot of you have done so I, I would certainly give this a try um, it's very ergonomic uh, and by that I mean it, it, it fits your body pretty well it moves with your body very nicely because it's on a cable because it's cuffed you're not having to put stress through your wrist um, your triceps are taking the tension throughout the whole range of movement and also right at the end you can kind of just nudge a little bit more of a control traction out of it um, which I find is second to none for a uh, good contraction on your tricep uh, there's not many exercises which I think you get that good of a contraction except for maybe like a single arm cuffed lateral raise so then we went into some mandatory posing uh, obviously this is still going to have some work done to it my physique now I'm fairly happy with what I've built over the last two years I would have liked to have built some more hamstrings um, but looking at my physique at the moment um, hamstrings calves uh, and maybe a little bit more of um, lateral delt um, thickness would be nice to see uh, but I'm, I'm not I don't hate it I don't hate my physique which is good as I'm definitely a positive um, I, I know a lot of people when you start getting into bodybuilding it can become a very negative um, outlook on your own body which I don't think is healthy at all um, I'm, I wouldn't say I was the biggest fan of my own physique I do look at other people's physiques and um, obviously I admire some people's physiques um, probably Kyle Davis he's got a phenomenal physique um, especially his shoulders um, so I do kind of admire certain people in the fitness industry very very rare that I actually kind of hold respect for certain people um, because not not throughout of arrogance or anything but I just understand that everybody is different so if somebody has achieved the physique um, which is different to mine you know there's so many circumstances that go into that that I don't really look at it as I want your physique because I know my my body is my body their body is their body their circumstances growing up their genetics their training history their assistance if they're on steroids etc um, but yeah no I, I, I generally tend to respect people rather than bodies but Kyle is somebody that um, I, I hold in high regard as well as obviously Josh and Jack Kingsley Koch um, who I have trained with multiple times um, so there's, there's there's lots of people which um, are behind me I guess or actually I, I wouldn't say that they were behind me whilst I'm kind of doing this but they, I know that there's people which um, as I go through my competition prep I, I, I can ask them for advice or if I am struggling on something I could ask them for support which is so, so, certainly something I've, I've not really had in the past um, certainly every other time that I've prepped it's been more of a you know I went to a leisure center where I trained people didn't really understand the whole process of dieting down um, people don't really understand the whole putting lots of tan on and uh, you know depleting yourself before a competition the low energy the low strength etc etc people don't really realize what you're putting your body through um, but now that I've changed to this gym um, I do see there's going to be a, a it's going to feel different I don't know if it's going to be different in a good way different in a bad way um, but it's definitely going to be different so I am looking forward to it um, this year could be a interesting year going forward I do I do have quite a few goals in which I want to tick off this year so it's an exciting time I hope you guys are also interested in the journey I'm going to sign off now because I realize I've been talking for quite some time and there is absolutely nothing on your screen so I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please smash that thumbs up hit the subscribe and I will speak to you guys in the next one I love you peace